Loading Blunderbuss in the Field, William Hovey Smith, 2013. I'm the author of Backyard Deer Hunting, and occasionally we make some unexpected kills. Blunderbuss and I have just made a kill. Yep, we sure have. Happy Valentine's Day. And we killed it. It's not that I have anything against the message. It's the media. These metalized balloons hang around forever. And so this one got killed, and it's going to be taken back home and properly disposed of. So, that being taken care of, I now have to reload Trusty Blunderbuss. All right. Well, how do we do this in the field? We carry everything in this small little bag. Whoa. And we have a segmented Ashley rod. Wolf. So, let's put the pieces together like yay. And yay. Okay. So I can take this in my small little belt pouch and have it with me all the time. All right, significant. All right, we gotta have powder. Right here. Powder measure, right here. And what we're loading are 70 grains of Hodgson's 777. The reason I'm using Hodgson's 777 is it develops more energy than the equivalent volume of black powder. Now this is where the funnel on the blunderbuss comes in. Now you can imagine how that would ease loading if you were sitting on top of a buggy seat going bang, a bang, a bang, a bang, or riding a camel. Well, <laughs> that's how this thing originated. It does nothing to spread the shot. This is just a straight cylinder board, 54 caliber, or 18 gauge gun. What? Yeah, all right, so we got that down. So we're gonna need some wads. And we have some of our custom hand cut wads here made out of egg crates. No. Center one of these up and seat it down. Give a little crunch here, and that compresses the power. Triple seven is particularly touchy about the amount of compression you give it. If you compress it lightly one time and loosely another, it will develop quite different velocities. All right. Next, we have cream of wheat. Yep, breakfast cereal stuff. Pour in some of this. That sort of acts as a cushion wad. And since we're being fastidious and have plenty of time, we load another wad. All right. And you can tell it's actually touching the sides of the barrel because you'll hear it scrape against it as it does. Okay, so we've got that compressed. Now, of course, shot. Now, I'm shooting an ounce of shot. Now, because I'm shooting on my own land, and this is upland game, I can shoot lead shot. So, okay, this is a mixture of number six and number eight lead shot. What this does, it gives me some pattern density and also some penetration. Because I may shoot squirrels, I may shoot rabbits, I may shoot woodcock with a slug. All right. If I was new, I was going after nothing else but woodcock, of course, I would load a straight charge of number eight. Boop! Down the board. Okay. And, of course, we are going to need an lot. There you go. Another of our goodies to our foam wads. 
Now, from time to time, I have run out of wadding material. And so we have impressed other stuff into use, including uh, corn leaves. Yeah, they work pretty good. You just take a double fold of corn leaves and run them down the bore, and yeah, they'll hold your shot charging. Or uh, anything else that might be handy. Now, the one thing you do not want to use is newspaper, because newspaper will get inflamed by the powder charge, smolder, and start fires. Been there, done that. So, newspaper is not the thing to use. All right. Then, of course, we have our percussion caps. These happen to be number 10 Remingtons, although 10s or 11s would work. 10s fit a little better. You crimp them slightly so they'll stay on the nipple. And this is the touchy part. You slide it on the nipple. Then, take the hammer back to full cock, pull the trigger, and lower it gently down on the cap. Now, you are loaded with percussion guns. If this gun were to fall and this hammer slam against something hard, this barrel will fire. You put it on half cock. If this gun should fall and this hammer should fall on something hard, this gun will likely fire. Boom! Full cock. If this gun should fall and this hammer should be jarred off the sear, it will most certainly fire. Burr! So, you cap just before you're going to use or when you think you may be in the presence of game. But, if you're hunting with a partner, you don't cap until you know that you have an imminent possibility of a shot. And as you're walking together, yeah, you decap and you both walk around for the dog points or the game flushes, and then you put your cap on. Okay? So, we're going to go down to the swamp and see if we can find some woodcock. Not only do I have backyard deer hunting, which tells you all you really need to know about the subject, I also have crossbow hunting, extreme muzzle hunting, and even practical bow fishing. And all of these are available as e-books. Now don't overload a blunderbuss or any other black powder gun, despite the temptation to do so. For more information on my books, blogs, videos, and radio show, Hovey's Outdoor Adventures, Go to my website at www.hoviesmith.com. Good hunting and good eating from the outdoors. Goodbye and God bless.